had to be a little quiet. But the only way you can memorize valvular heart diseases is by trying to not memorize them. So for starters, this is a normal pressure volume loop. Very simple four phases, okay? Let's say your ventricle is fully filled. It contracts against a closed aortic valve. So it's an isovolumetric contraction in the sense the volume remains the same, but the pressure increases. And then when the aortic valve opens, there is ejection. It reaches the peak pressure, which is your systolic blood pressure. And then finally, your aortic valve closes. When it closes, your ventricle will now relax. So there is isovolumetric relaxation, which basically means ventricle mein koi blood nahi hai. It's just relaxing. The walls are relaxing. And finally, mitral valve will open. That will cause the ventricle to be filled from the left atrium and then mitral closes and this is a closed loop circle. Stroke volume mane the amount of blood that is getting out of the ventricle. So all the blood that's being ejected, it's usually around 70 ml. So this particular point you're seeing is called the end diastolic volume. That means after the ventricle has been completely filled, diastole ke baad, this is the amount of blood that is there. And this one that you see is the end systolic volume. That is after ejection, this is the amount of blood left in the ventricle. Let's start simple. Aortic stenosis. The aorta is stenosed. Your ventricle has to contract extra hard to push blood through this thin opening. That means the pressure, left ventricular pressure, is going to be really high. But now it's contracting extra hard. But the amount of blood that is eventually leaving is actually quite less. Which is why the stroke volume is less. And this is how the curve looks. Second most simple one, mitral stenosis. Mitral stenosis may just remember that everything is less. The amount of blood entering the ventricle is only so less. That means your end diastolic volume, which is this one, will be less. Your systolic volume, which is this one, will be less. Little complicated, aortic regurgitation. Deekho, in this, what happens is, during diastole, all the blood that's in the aorta starts coming back into the ventricle. So essentially, for the next cardiac cycle, there is an extra amount of blood that's already in the ventricle. That is why your end diastolic volume is increased. Also remember that the volume does not remain same during ventricular relaxation because it's coming back into the ventricles. That is why this part, your isovolumetric relaxation, isn't a straight line anymore. And obviously, when your end diastolic volume has increased, at the end of the day, your stroke volume has increased. So, mitral regurgitation, what happens? The amount of blood that is ending up in the ventricle before systole, that is your end diastolic volume, is always a lot because not only is it getting blood from the pulmonary veins, but it's also getting all this extra blood that has gone back into the atrium, into the ventricle. So your end diastolic volume has increased. So your stroke volume increases, but your end systolic volume remains less only. Just because stroke volume increases, it doesn't mean it's of any help because your stroke volume is talking about both the blood that goes into aorta as well as the atrium. So essentially, the amount of blood that's going into aorta is quite less which is why there are issues. 